Hey, thanks again for sending in questions related to our recent sermons. Um, as you know, we're in our series entitled A Better Story, in which we are saying that Jesus is the better story compared to anything in the world, whether we're talking about uh, power or purpose or justice or friendship or self-worth. Um, Jesus is a better story. So this last week, we talked about friendship. In John 15, Jesus says, you are my friends and love each other as I have loved you. There's also a verse in John 15, it's verse 14, where Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command. So the question this week is, can I stop being Jesus' friend? Uh, will he like kick me out if I'm not doing what he commands? Because he says, John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. And that doesn't really sound like a lot of what we said this last weekend, a lot of what we say the message of Jesus is overall, which is he sees us to the bottom, he loves us to the sky. There's this unconditional acceptance that he gives us. And so now it sounds like actually it is conditional. Uh, there's an if. You are my friends if you do what I command. So what does that mean? Will I, will he, will I stop being his friend if I'm not doing what he commands? Um, the, <laughs> the answer is uh, no, you won't stop being his friend. We never lose what we have with Jesus. The answer is... Um, if we are his friend, then that will produce something in our lives, uh, which is following what he commands. And then even when we don't follow what he commands, we still follow what he commands because we repent and we return back to him. Uh, the wording that we always find um, in terms of our relationship with Jesus is that uh, we have it, period, um, if we've really received it, we've really received it. But then that produces something in our lives. Uh, so you could look at 1 Corinthians 15, 2. This is the gospel by which you are saved if you continue in belief. Um, so what happens is if this gospel has saved you, you will continue in belief. The proof, really, that it has already saved you is what happens in the future. It is not like you have to wait to get it after you have proved yourself. That's not what it is. It is you currently have it if a future event happens. Um, if the future event doesn't happen, then that would mean you never had it. That's what it means. So if you currently have it, future event will happen. If future event happens, it proves that you always had it, really. You could look at Colossians 1, 22, 23. I think I'm getting those verses right, but you have been reconciled to Christ if you continue in belief, if you continue to hold on to the hope that was held out to you. So again, you currently have it. You don't have to wait to get it. This is not be good enough, right enough, long enough, and then at the end of your life, you will, you will be saved. No, that's not what it is. It is you are saved now. You don't have to wait for it. It has already happened. Jesus says, John 15, you are my friend. It, it's, it's already taken place. Now, if future event happens. It's not if past event has happened, it's if future event happens in these verses. It's the future event proves what happened in the past, one way or the other. Our future proves what has always been true, or it proves what has never been true. Um, it's we have it now. We have Jesus' friendship now. We are reconciled now. We are saved now. Um, if future event happens. Um, so there is a continuing in belief which proves what has always been true or what has never been true. That's always the wording. In, in Christianity, if you're, if you're an English major, we say the, uh, the indicative precedes the imperative. Uh, what, is, uh, what, what is true about you precedes any uh, imperative, any command of what needs to be 
done. Um, so Jesus says, you are my friend. So that is set. There is no doubt about that. That is first, second imperative, do what I command, right? It's what Jesus says uh, to the woman caught in adultery, right? Everybody wants to stone her. And Jesus, Jesus says, does nobody condemn you? And she says, I don't know. And he says, I don't either. So no condemnation has been declared upon her life. And then he says, now go and sin no more. It is the indicative, what is true about her, no condemnation. That has been set. Now what? Now go and sin no more. Um, and in the sinning no more proves what has happened previously, which is there is no condemnation. If you have Jesus, you cannot lose him. And if you have Jesus, then future actions will continue to prove that you always had Jesus, going back to the point of initial faith. So the best I can tell, that's the way it works in Scripture, because that is the way that it is always articulated. Uh, the indicative precedes the imperative. We are saved. We are his friend. Um, there is no condemnation for us. And now our future behavior will prove what happened in the past. Hope that helps. We can't lose him as a friend if we had him in the first place. Um, he's always with us. He sees us to the bottom. He accepts us, and that acceptance of us produces certain kinds of behavior, uh, which proves the acceptance. So thanks for sending in the question, and we will see you next time.